Hello. I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, and the question is as follows. What songs have you been singing today? Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye, three and twenty-four gurgeefs baked in the pie. And so that's quite a nice song. It's quite, quite jolly. But there's a quite a lengthy sec a, a lengthy section in uh, Maurice Nicole's commentaries. I, b I believe it's volume four, and the paper is entitled "Singing Songs," and we all sing songs, whether it's sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye, or whatever. We sing internally. It's like if you imagine an old record player, and you put a disc on. And it goes round and round and round, and we sing the same songs, and songs that I've been singing, singing, but I but I recently took the record off the the disc, and actually smashed it into little pieces, and it felt nothing has felt so good. It felt great, and songs I've sung as almost everyone does, people who've who've come through to me and are working with me in inverted commas, have also sung these songs. And they go like this. Oh, what a hard life I've had. How difficult things are. My knees are hurting. My back is hurting. My uh, relatives are giving me grief. I haven't won the national lottery. Oh, poor me, what a shame. Uh, she actually left me and she, she took the house with her and took most of the money from out of my, my Swiss bank account. Oh, what a shame, how horrible it is, how disgusting life is, etc., etc. And we are singing these songs all the time. And for the main part, we're not conscious of it. Someone just comes and places the record on the, on the turntable and we start singing these songs. Oh, I so much wanted to have babies, but I didn't have them. De dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum, dum. What a wretched shame! Uh, the person I loved has disappeared into thin air. Oh woe and grief is me! Oh what misery! And all these songs that we are singing actually keep us on the lowest level imaginable. And as I say, for the main part, we're not aware of it but we need to become aware of it. And I was out, I think I was doing some gardening the other, the other day, and a song started playing, oh, if only it had been different, if only this had happened and that had happened, oh, woe is me, what a miserable miserable life I have. And I, I observed myself, and I realised what was happening, and I took the disc off the turntable and I smashed it, and I threw it in the raspberry bushes in the garden which is where it belongs. Uh, but the paper, I'll try to find it, because as we know, Nicole wrote about five. In fact, he did write five different volumes of the commentaries. And it's a, it's a rather a lengthy paper. It's about three or four pages. And it's called Singing Songs. And we were, we're not in the number one hit parade. Well, I'm not. Not yet anyway. Uh, but we sing, we are all, all of us, Every day we are singing songs to ourselves and we have roles within our psyche in which memories are stored and they keep rotating around and it's hitting the play button on a similar incident, moment, song and it's playing and this is the epitome of mechanicalness which is the last thing we should be if we actually aiming to become <laughs> to become conscious obviously you can't become conscious mechanically it goes without saying but just observe yourself and see what songs you're singing and as i say i've had people who are apparently working with me only influence c knows if it's real work obviously uh and they've been going on about how difficult things are and whether with their family or with their ailments and their aches and their pains and their financial situation. Don't want to hear it anymore. And uh, I'm going to share a little story with you. And uh, I rent my property. And if the landlord is watching, I'm sure you are. Hello to you. 
Uh, Mr. R. Uh, he told me a wonderful tale. I've been here for almost 13 years. Unlucky 13. And he told me a wonderful story a few years back. We were having lunch together. And he said he has a number of houses and he lets uh, apartments within the houses. And he, he took the job over from his father, who, who no longer does it. And he said to me, when we were sitting having lunch, and he said to me one day, uh, he said, you know, when I show people the apartments that go on about how difficult their life is and uh, or the problems they have and, and how difficult it was to find accommodation and they're separated from X, Y, Z and so on, whatever. And he said, at first, automatically, I used to tolerate it and listen to it. And he said, a few months rolled by and then he actually t <laughs> it had enough of it. And as soon as the person started, like, for example, oh, I would just like to say it's been very difficult. I've just come through a divorce. And, and, and then the landlord would turn around to them and say, that's quite enough now. I've heard it so many times. I don't want to hear it anymore. Don't say any more, please. Just take the apartment or don't take the apartment. But I don't want to hear all your personal baggage and all the hardships you've been through, which is a very, very good starting point. And he's not supposedly doing the fourth way work. And it's the first time I've mentioned him in my epic videos. But funnily enough, how the work, how the way the world, the, the, uh, how the way the work works. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were talking about something and he just threw A.R. Orage onto the table and started talking about the books that Orage has writ had written and how much he admired them. And I was completely blown away. And uh, it makes me think that a lot of people who actually genuinely do this work uh, are completely out of the limelight, unlike me, who is obviously directly in the limelight. But this is a talk about singing songs, not about rented apartments in London. Let me see how long I've been. Oh, it's OK. It's OK. Uh, but that, that Nicole, I get a lot of very, very positive feedback. Uh, from people who've read his work and it is it's astounding he actually gets to the to the hub of the thing and actually tells it like it is and there is an aspect of the work which is quite acerbic and it's quite harsh because it's it's attacking your false personality uh, but it has to be otherwise the, the work wouldn't work if it was all niceties and hello isn't it a great day and so on and so forth no it's not and someone sent me an email. Hello, Michael. I know a few Michaels. Uh, maybe one of them is the Archangel Michael. Sent me an email only a couple of days ago. He's a guy about 40 in uh, Idaho. Greetings. And he said, uh, I've, I've seen so much in life from the very, very top level, from like, like super wealthy people and influential people to the to the lowest level uh, and I don't really want to see any more I want to do the work and and when I was reading the email it struck me as so so pertinent and so incredibly powerful and I was like wow what you're saying is so so on the point uh, I've seen so much of life and I know what it is he's talking about mechanical influence a life and I, and I don't want to see any more of it. Uh, and I'm, I'm in the same camp now. And if we're going to do this work, if we're seriously going to do it, there is something very exquisitely beautiful in it. We need to separate. One of the first things we need to do is to separate from the so-called external life. Uh, we need to bring a barrier up against it or draw a drawbridge up. Uh, because it is as it is, and it's been like that for literally thousands of years, uh, and nothing changes. But we can change, we can evolve, and we do that by coming away from external life, creating an energy within ourselves which is not affected by external life and the things that happen, and we actually grow and evolve. But if we're still part of external life, we don't. And as I said when I started this little talk, uh, one of the main things that keeps us attached to external life is singing the songs. The record going round and round. Oh, I've had such a difficult life. Oh, woe is me. I, and I've done it myself. To my shame and my chagrin, I've actually done it myself. 
uh, how, for example, a, a relationship that hasn't worked out and I've wanted it to work out and I've become, oh, woe and misery is me, how awful, singing songs. And as I said a few minutes ago, it keeps one on a very, very low level. The whole being needs, one's whole being needs to change and you need to go on to a different level. And the last talk I gave a few hours ago, I was out there in the street and I was talking about chapter 21 of Beelzebub's Tales uh, and where Gurdjieff says, uh, our psyche is damaged enough without adding all this nonsense about the occult, magic, spiritualism, theosophy, religion, etc., etc. Uh, we need to work on ourselves and actually really, really do the work. And if we do, and I speak from experience, something extraordinarily, unspeakably beautiful actually, actually occurs by doing it. Uh, we don't do it ourselves, but by working upon ourselves, we can bring in influence C, and that actually does the major work that needs to be done. Uh, but this is, as I say, this is a talk about singing songs, uh, which we do. Uh, and for the main part, we do it unconsciously. Uh, and it's the worst thing that one can possibly do. Uh, and people can even apply it to the work. Oh, I've tried to observe myself for so long. I've done this. I've been to this group. I've been to that group. Nothing has worked out. And underneath it all, when you chip away, there's like a, a veneer, a, a palpable veneer of negativity. This is from people in a work. And it's not, it's not, it's not, excuse me, it's not about that. It's about being what is inside, being projected onto the surface and actually live in it. And by its very, very nature, the work will only appeal to an extraordinarily small amount of people. It won't appeal to lots and lots. It never has and it never will. Uh, but when you get it, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's liberating, it's joy inducing. It's absolutely incredible. And obviously I love what I do and I, I keep on doing it. And some people will understand what the work actually means. And most importantly, what influence C is and what it can do. And most importantly, again, if we are singing our songs, we are separated from influence C completely. And I've had comments from older guys who are like the undercurrent again, a veneer of negativity. Oh, I've tried this. This one is not good. That one is not good. My life has not been very, very good. Uh, no, no, no. Rise above it like a phoenix from the ashes. Rise above it. But just dwelling on it all the time, round and round and round and round. You just basically separating yourself from the work which is a very, very delicate, sensitive thing. Uh, as I say, I'll try to find the section in Nicole's commentaries about singing songs, but we do it all the time. And, and you just have to leave your apartment and socialise, and you see how prevalent sing, singing songs, <laughs> you don't have to go to a, what do they call it, karaoke bar or whatever, uh, but everywhere, everyone is singing songs. And here in Britain, we have a divorce rate of two out of three within the first seven years. That's absolutely appalling. Two out of three within seven years. And you can imagine all the misery that ensues from that. But this is life, mechanical influence, a life, and we need to separate from it. So if I've lost my wife or I've lost a few million dollars or whatever, so what? As Nietzsche said, a divine so what have a listen to the songs you're seeing though <laughs> 